Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver okay, now. RoadToRuda.com. Um, silver got a little bump because of bump ba bum. What's the reason, Bix? What's the reason? Consumer prices have risen every month since Bidenomics began. Um, the CPI came in a little lower than what the highest people were expecting month on month. It uh, came in at 3% instead of they were expecting between 3 and 4%. Not a big deal. Obviously, it's completely rigged. It doesn't matter what they write. Truthfully, we all know prices are going through the roof. I paid for gas from RV the other day. I didn't want to tell you in California. I think I paid $5.35 or something per gallon of regular unleaded gas. Holy crap. <laughs> and filling up a massive RV. It's not massive. It's a cute little RV with a big tank. We know that the government lies to us. Um, I heard that uh, in the Ukraine, they're, they've busted them for not spending the money on the war. It all went to contractors probably went through contractors to ftx lookalike and then back into the democrats party i don't know you know the reality of living in america is very difficult these days and it's going to get worse it's going to get much harder to live but you can do well if you keep keep on the silver train definitely they are protecting 30 dollars silver like it's that's the line in the sand as they say um of course i got the little jump and got Tap down the head by Rustin Benham and friends. It's all right. Hey, it means more silver for us, right? Meanwhile, on the silver front, we are looking at, if you look at what they used to in the past, look at, and what the Indians are looking at, people from India, um, they only buy when the price, they only buy seriously when the price goes under the moving averages. Um, we've been hovering above the moving averages since March. I have outline this every month and by the way india just released their numbers today um i had expected much lower numbers because the way i judge it now <laughs> is looking at the iibx which is the the volumes of silver uh sales going through the regular new exchange it's about uh six months old or so in india it's a real silver exchange where they actually go in and buy silver and take it home with them um, and that's been a pretty good gauge of how active the uh, India imports are. So the India, the IIBX for last month was down massively. They just literally, when the price started to move um, after March, right in here, it started to move. Indians just stopped buying on the IIBX. So I figured, and that would be April. So I figured it's going to be a shitty April. And it, was, it wasn't as shitty as I thought, mind you. The numbers come in, drumroll please, at 4.97 million ounces, right around there. You know, it all depends on what you take as the average uh, price during the month of April. Um, but here's how that is kind of juxtaposed to the first three months. In January, it was 20.7 20, million. February was massive, 76.3. And March was pretty big, big too, 33.3. Uh, so the first quarter had 130 million ounces. If you annualize that, that's 520 million ounces. That's a hell of a lot of silver going just into India. Um, but again, the April number came in at uh, 4.97. I'm looking at the IIBX for May, and it's looking very strong. I mean, we're just halfway through the month, and it's already triple. It's already triple what uh, was done in the prior month in April. So I'm looking for a jump back into the, depending on the rest of the month, mind you, depending on the rest of the month, 20 to 30 million ounces. And if they slam the price down of silver, it could be anywhere from, I, I know the Indians are like itching at getting in again because they've started trickling in even though the price is high. Uh, and what are they going to do at $30 silver? That most likely will be the new floor for a while, so they'll have to just bump up their price they're paying. So that I think they have an inkling that that is coming, and that's why I want the IIBX, which is uh, a true silver exchange, has started, I mean, all month on my calculations. Pretty much every day of the month, they're taking um, 
silver deliveries, and that didn't happen last month. They stopped halfway through the month. So I think uh, we're looking at a potentially, if, you, if we get a slam down, it's going to be a huge month in May. And remember, this is real physical silver going into uh, India. It's not even counting China. China, you can quadruple whatever you hear in India. So that means China's doing what? Two billion ounces a month in imports? <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm serious. Who makes all the solar panels? That's going to need at least 600 million ounces. Who makes all the electric cars? That's going to need at least probably... They don't make all of them, but they make a, the, the vast majority. Um, it'll probably be 80 million ounces. There's 700 million ounces just going into China. And just for electric vehicles and for solar. Of course, these numbers don't jive with the Silver Institute because they're a bunch of liars and cheaters and criminals. Absolutely criminal what they did uh, with the, the silver survey, the silver lie, it's called. Um, I got I to gotta figure out a good name for it, a catchy name. Anyway, that's what's going on. Um, here is the numbers for the imports right here. $134 million worth of silver uh, was imported for April and is it exact? No, I don't know what day of the month that the silver came in and what it was bought for. Uh, some people claim to know that. I, I don't know. I don't have those connections. Uh, but I, I get an average of $27, uh, which is really high for silver for averaging for a month. And the Indians still bought about 5 million ounces, uh, imported about 5 million ounces. So that, that's really positive. And they've already done 15. Is it 15? No, 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 no. They will do. <laughs> they will do. According, if my IIBX analysis is, is kind of in line, I think they'll do between 20 and 30 million ounces again, which will put us on track, getting back on track to the 500 million ounces. <laughs> it's just so insane, these numbers. Like two years ago, India imported 300 million ounces. Everybody was just shocked, mind blown. Uh, and they've started off this year. This would put us at 135 million ounces four months in. So times that by three, you're looking at uh, 400 and something million ounces, 450 million ounces. And 300 was a shocker. Wait till they get 450. Um, but I think it'll be more than that if the, the system stays together, which I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think the system's staying together. We did have an announcement. Germany's new photovoltaic additions hit 1.25 gigawatts. Now, remember, this is Europe. Everybody said, no, they just stopped altogether doing solar it's bullshit they haven't stopped all the all the news official news outlets are saying solar's dead electric cars are dead it's ridiculous look at the numbers so uh that is a jump of and i did the calculation germany's uh federal network agency has reported that one uh 1249 megawatts of new Photovoltaic capacity was installed in January, up from 780 megawatts in 2023. So you go 780 divided by 1250. 1250 equals 62%. So remember, last year's solar was like 350 to 400 million ounces. Everybody's announcing it's 50 to 100% higher this year. And what's the solar? What's the Silver Institute saying about it? Nothing. And it's all TopCon going in, so you can you know add fifty percent more to that. The world is completely adrift in um, fake numbers, fake news, fake presidents, fake government, fake wars. It's all a mess. What can you do? Hang in there. Keep stacking your silver. Hang on. One day that will be gone. Pretty soon. Pretty soon, do you see how scared they were? It hit $30. Pretty soon, $30 silver will be the floor of silver. And then India will start buying anything under $30. $30. Right now, they have started to trickle in again. I couldn't believe it. All month, every day this month, the IIBX has been actually delivering physical silver. Last month, they, they gave up after the first half of the month. So, yeah, India's buying, and they're buying at much higher prices than they usually buy at. Uh, again, if it breaks 30, that's your new floor. If it breaks and holds 30, that's your new floor. And then India will buy anything, anytime it kind of dips below 30. So maybe they're thinking, they know they're going to have to buy silver. And they think if it breaks through 30, it's not going back down below 30 for much. So we won't be able to buy much more silver. We might as well load up now. 
That's the thinking in my in my estimation. But again, yeah, um, 60, 62% uh, jump in Germany's solar edition for January. This is going on all over the world, my friends. In China, it's probably about 100%. They haven't announced anything. Other than the big Chinese uh, manufacturers are, are all all making all of it, 100%. Well, profitably, 100% in, in China is making Topcon and, or above. And there's, there's other types of solar panels that are even better that use even more silver. So, yeah, it's all happening no matter what the Silver Institute and Metals Focus says. Uh, Jeffrey Christian's numbers come out soon. Poor Jeff. He's got, he's got the advantage now because he's seen everybody else's numbers. So he puts out his silver yearbook later in the, in the month. So he has a month to jimmy his numbers uh, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if he breaks out solar, they'll be above uh, what Metals Focus and the Silver Institute did, just so he can say, oh, yeah, we have the real numbers. It won't be the actual numbers, 350 to 400 million ounces last year in solar. And this year will be 550 to 600 million ounces is my current guess. Everything could change. You know, the world could blow up. Uh, we could get a solar flare and poof, no more electronics. But that's the, the world we live in. We like live on the edge. We're souls in this meat sack living on the edge. One day we'll go. I guarantee you, you're going you're gonna to pass away one day. The question, it, the question you'll ask yourself is, could I have stayed an extra 10 years? And in that 10 years, what would I have done? Did you accomplish your soul mission? Now, this time, if there's a solar flare and all of the electronics go out on one side of the earth and the blockchain will still be there have you know. And I have some of the blockchain locked up in my Faraday cage. Little bags. Where? These little bags. Put your electronics in these just in case. But, you know, that's that's the funny thing about that. It, I, I've always known it, but if you buy Faraday bags and all that to save your electronics, you're going to save your electronics, but you'll be, I have nobody to talk to because all the networks will be down. There'll be no internet. And, you know, if there's a big solar flare, an EMP or something like that, you're not going to be talking to anybody. You'll be playing with yourself and your computer until all of a sudden you're out of power and then it's over. So, yeah, it's a stretch. I know preppers get a little crazy, including me. All right, uh, Theta. Lots, lots happening in Theta. The future of AI is in the hands of Theta, in my in my estimation. Um, the uh, 3D rendering and all that is going on. Theta is like, <laughs> it's a grocery store of the best things for the future. And all you got to do is buy Theta or Theta Fuel. Um, we're coming up to the Edge Cloud is already there. We're coming up to the bonus, the bonus round um, for sh sharing your. Uh, it's called the what's it called? Uh, the, it's like an AI type of bonus if you have a certain type of computer, and you're gonna if you're currently running in an Elite Edge node, um, you're gonna need you get a big bonus if you have. 500,000 T fuel stake, which is a hell of a lot of money. Um, right now, it's about $50,000. Um, and you have. Amy's taking my car somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and you have. Uh, so you can stake another $500,000. Sorry, 500,000 T fuel. So a million T fuel. If you have that much, and there's not many people that have much. Um, you can earn, you'll earn 7% on the first staking and then up to 50%, up to 50% on the second. So I think a lot of people will be buying T fuel in the near future. Uh, Theta is at, hovering around $2. T fuel is at 94 cents. Um, right now I'd be buying T fuel, but like, then again, now here's the other thing Theta is the mothership. I talked to Jenny Moonstone about this. I'm like, which is going to do better in the long run, Theta or Theta fuel? And she's like, the mothership. Theta is literally the mothership of all this stuff. Theta Fuel is great. You know, she liked Theta Fuel. But if you're looking to invest, because the big money, the big money are going to try to get uh, validator nodes. She didn't say that. I did. Um, and what's, what is, the, what is the, the difference between a validator node and a guardian node and T Fuel, which is, it's kind of like with Ethereum, T Fuel is the gas you got to use for Ethereum when you do a transaction. Obviously, it's a hell of a lot cheaper and a hell of a lot faster than Ethereum ever will be. Um, yeah, I, I think it, Ethereum is not long for this world. 
Um, Theta can do the exact same thing for pennies on the dollar, and oh, by the way, it's almost instantaneous. Uh, and it's done with their structure of how they structured their blockchain. There's validators, a handful. There's up to 31 validators, so they can instantly approve transactions. But you don't want that, that centralization, so they have a guardian layer, which has a whole bunch of people staking their uh, Theta and earning T fuel for it. So they keep those guys in check. Um, there's the validators and then the guardians and then the T fuel. So if you're looking at which one should I buy, I think right now maybe T fuel because it's a 20 to 1. When it gets to 10 to 1, I'm thinking it's better long term to have Theta. It's, hey, nobody knows. This is brand new stuff, by the way. <laughs> The world can't figure out what, what's going to go on. And all the chart people say this and the, the uh, what do they call it? Tokenomics. Tokenomics is the analysis of how much a token's supposed to be worth. Is it true? Is it not? Who the hell cares? Um, but I want to remind you if you know why people will be bidding up Theta is that Theta is the, is the mothership. It is the... Uh, Theta, well, let me tell you, Theta is a permissionless blockchain, which means anyone can run a validator node without the approval of Theta Labs. The validator node uh, propose, vote for, and finalize new blocks in the chain, while the guardian nodes seal the blocks and acts as a check on, in, on malicious or otherwise non-functional validator nodes. <clears throat> That's great. Here's the kicker of why I think the big money, like Apple computers, you know, we've already got, let's see who we got in there. Uh, there's Theta Labs, obviously, Binance. Google is running a validator node. Uh, Blockchain is running a validator node. Samsung is rod, running a validator node. Gumi, Sony, uh, DHVC, CAA, the big uh, Hollywood shit, uh, Fuel Foundries, Abacus, a whole bunch of people running their validator nodes. Um, those numbers will be replaced. I mean, the names will be replaced. It'll be replaced by the likes of Amazon, General Electric, uh, you name it. What are the biggest, you know, Elon Musk is going to run a, uh, Tesla's going to run a validator node. I guarantee you that someday, someday down the line. Why? Because they can create uh, subchains. And to get to the, the in the top 30, you got to bid for the Theta tokens. So all these big money people, big fiat money people are going to be bidding on Theta uh, because there's a minimum requirement of 200,000 uh, Theta, which is like $400,000. It's not huge for these companies. Meanwhile, there's a maximum of 31 validators that can be run at one time. When there are more than 31 nodes staked as validators, only 31 nodes with the highest number of Theta staked are eligible for proposing and voting on new blocks. So whoever has the most theta is going to be, and, and as, as a validator, you can uh, control a hell of a lot. You can vote on, for example, making new T fuel. There you go. You can vote on making new T fuel. So yeah, it is very interesting times. Um, and, and you get, uh, I think the theta just got another airdrop um, of uh, Levita tokens. It's always fun to get those dropped in your in your uh, Theta wallet. Anyway, like I said, Theta and T Fuel are the future. If you're interested in the future, uh, I highly recommend getting them. All right, I gotta run. Uh, make sure you sign up for the private road at Road to Ruta. I just posted a new private road discussion. Um, it's about silver, so go check that out at RoadToRuta.com. You can subscribe by hitting subscribe today, and we'll send you a paper wallet loaded with 5 Theta, 50 T Fuel, and 500 T Drop. You don't have to know anything about cryptos. Just store it in your safe with your silver. This is with a one-year subscription. It's $2.99 for a year. You get all the behind-the-scenes info from RoadToRuta.com. This is Bix. I'll talk to you later.